pilot. Best in the galaxy. <laughs> I like this kid. Star Wars is obviously the biggest movie franchise of all time, and it seems to only get bigger and touch new generations with each film. I got a really good feeling about this. Solo, a Star Wars story, comes out on May 25th. We are so excited. This is the first time we're really going to get to know Han Solo. So what's your name, anyway? In this story, Han Solo. Han Solo. I'm Captain of the Millennium Falcon. Probably one of the top five most iconic characters in the history of cinema. Yeah! We get to learn his origin story. I waited a long time for a shot like this. All the scenes that I read were so funny, so exciting. I loved the way they were spinning the character. I was kicked out of the flight academy for having a mind of my own. It's a rite of passage story. It's a journey that you watch him go on. Do you think your friend Han can do what needs to be done? I believe you can. It's fun. What do you think? Uh, well, what do you know? It's interesting. If you come with us, you're in this life for good. It's cinematic. People have got their Han Solo costumes, their Chewbacca costumes. They're ready to get in line and get in the theater. You might want to buckle up, baby. We here at People are such huge fans of everything Star Wars. Ever since The Force Awakens kicked off that new trilogy in 2015, we've been making special magazines, commemorative issues, as each new movie releases, whether it's part of the main saga or one of the cool standalone stories. When they decided to produce episodes 7, 8, and 9, they were going to also create these standalone stories. From beginning to end, it tells one tale within the Star Wars universe that fans didn't know about before. So this is the second standalone movie in the Star Wars series. Get ready. So it will be a movie explaining Han Solo's origins. It's taking somebody who is cherished in the Star Wars universe and explaining how they got to be the hero that we all know and love. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. So Han Solo, since the moment he stepped on screen was very much this reluctant hero, which of course is always a favorite in movies. I've done more than I bargained for on this trip already. There's just something about the renegade and the, just the kind of the lawless, like no rules attitude that he had. Yes, I bet you have. He has humor. Who is this? What's your operating number? Uh, boring conversation anyway. He has charm. I like the sound of that. He has wit. Don't everybody thank me at once. How can you be cheeky in space? You know what I mean? Like, it's all, it must be serious all the time in space. Keep your distance though, Chewie. But don't look like you're trying to keep your distance. I don't know. Fly casual. Han has always embodied conflicting drives, you know? He wants to be seen as the most cynical and hardened, and I don't stick my neck out for anyone, and then when the crunch comes, he will be there. I think him saving Luke in the first one is as good as it gets. I have you not. What? Yeah, Han Solo is, is, in many ways, is, is on his own, and yet there's a real desire to to connect, to be a part of something. Hey! Hey! I knew you'd come back, I just knew it. Well, I was gonna let you get all the credit and take all the reward. He's just like a, let's just, you know, throw something at it and see what happens. And always lands on his feet. It's quite incredible. Come on, let's keep a little optimism. <laughs> the identity of this person uh, is Alden Ehrenreich. Yes. When Alden started the audition process, he had no idea what he was getting himself into. He was up against 3,000 other actors. It took six months. He auditioned over six different times. But what's funny is he was actually the first person to read for the role. I knew kind of everybody would be going out for it, and I just, I read the sides, and I loved them, and I thought, all right, who knows, but, uh, but let me give it a shot. This is a pretty gutsy move to, to say, I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a shot at this. It doesn't hurt that he's incredibly charismatic and, you know, funny when he wants to be and 
good when he's in action. I did like a screen test on the Millennium Falcon, and when I would do a different scene, it was just even better. It's pretty incredible, so I'm just uh, very, very excited. So when they did cast Alden Ehrenreich, a lot of people were kind of like, I'm sorry, who? But he's actually been around in Hollywood for a while. When he signed on to Solo, he was just coming off of Hail Caesar, a Coen Brothers film from 2016. I wrangled for a while, and then they saw I could say a line or two, and I was bad clam or deputy number two or guy's buddy for a couple of years, and then uh, someone heard me sing, and they made me the guy. Alden has it. You know, he just does. He's got something really unique and quirky, and it was great casting. Really great casting. We waited a long time for a shot like this. The character of Han Solo is so well established, but then on top of that, you've got Harrison Ford, who is the embodiment of Han Solo. So Alden Ehrenreich has huge shoes to fill. Harrison was awesome. It was awesome just to meet him. He was so kind of encouraging and supportive. It was really nice to then walk onto the movie knowing that I was doing it somewhat with his blessing. The first meeting is stupendous. It's beautifully written. So you want to make a difference? Yeah. Trust me, you're going to love it. When I read the script, you know, I read it with a lot of curiosity. What, what's the story of, of, about young Han Solo going to be? I'm going to be a pilot. That's in the galaxy. This is a, an amazing character to spin off into his own story. I might be the only person who knows what you really are. What's that? Solo is a bit of a mystery. Where did he come from? Why is he the way he is? I've been running scams on the street since I was 10. This is kind of a biopic about a fictional character. So by its very nature, it's a lot more about this person's feelings and thoughts and how they and character and how they become who they are. I'm a driver, a great pilot. Star Wars movies are truly like the best kept secrets when it comes to the plot, but we do know this takes place with a young Han roughly a decade or so before A New Hope, which was that original very first Star Wars movie. May the force be with you. Perhaps one of the strongest friendships in the Star Wars saga and movie history even is Han Solo and Chewbacca. What's your name anyway? The first meeting is stupendous. It's beautifully written. You're gonna need a nickname because I ain't saying that every time. They trust each other and they're in dangerous places and they're relying on each other. Another major plot point, we're gonna to get to see when Han first meets Lando Calrissian, played by Donald Glover. The seat taken. Nobody's in the seat that I ain't taken, friends. And we're gonna find out how Han Solo manages to get his hands on the Millennium Falcon. Do you win your ship playing cards? I like this kid. Which of course becomes his ship that he pilots all the way through the rest of the films. It's less about how he impacts on others and how it's more about how others impact on him. Of course, now you've got a problem, a big problem. Well, there's this sort of underbelly in Star Wars that it hasn't really been explored yet, but that Han Solo comes from. These people, not your friends. This is an adventure story. It's kind of a heist movie in some ways. And the tone of it is a, is a little different than the other movies with surprising twists, turns, and ways of entertaining us. I've got a really good feeling about this. We have a bunch of great new characters being introduced to the Star Wars universe in this movie, played by everything from up and coming actors all the way to Hollywood veterans. Woody Harrelson is in this film, Tandy Newton, Amelia Clark, best known for Game of Thrones. Where are my dragons? Amelia Clark plays Kira, kind of this femme fatale type character from Han's younger years. You look good. A little rough around the edges, but good. She'll be the sort of character that will keep you on your toes, and I think that was one of the biggest things that drew me to her as a character and got me really excited. We need to divert auxiliary power to the rear deflector shield. We definitely do. It was the biggest seal of approval I've ever had for a costume. When I walked on set and Alden just went, Damn. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> we need a ship. Every single part of her as a character reflects on the Han Solo that we know and love. Kira, who is his formative experience with romance, and that experience very directly influences 
the relationships he has later on with people like Leia. I love you. I know. Woody Harrelson plays the character Tobias Beckett. He's in some ways a troubled soul, but I think he's established a certain degree of comfort with criminality. If you come with us, you're in this life for good. He leads this group of scoundrels and becomes a bit of a mentor of sorts to Han Solo. All you gotta do is think a few moves ahead, anticipate your opponent. There's a lesson to be learned here. Yeah, I think you would find him likable if he was here right now. But, you know, the kind of guy doesn't suffer fools. <laughs> No, you can't wipe them off. They're holograms. Tandy Newton, who of course everyone loves as Maeve on Westworld, plays Val, who's a member of Beckett's crew. Val is, talk about empowerment. She just would defy anyone or anything if it compromised who she knows she is. Let's go! What's the plan? Tandy Newton plays the first major black woman character, a historic moment in the Star Wars universe. Of course, there have been incredible characters. Lupita was wonderful in the movie, but you don't actually see her. I'm basically the first woman of color whose skin is seen on camera with a main role. I was a kid that loved these films, and yet I, there was nobody like me. It's a different thing when you actually feel represented, it's very special. You know who I answer to. Of course, every Star Wars movie needs a bad guy. Here we have Dryden Voss, intergalactic crime lord played by Paul Bettany. If you do fail me, we'll all be out of options. We don't know a lot about him. All we know is that he has these scars on his face, but we don't know exactly how he got them. Who are these guys? We have a fun new droid in this movie called L337, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Ah, L3! Let go of the mean man's face. What's cool is she's a self-made droid that's Lando's sidekick. You done flirting? Rounding out the characters is Rio Durant, this little pilot that's part of Beckett's crew, and he's voiced by the multi-talented John Favreau. Whoa, is that a Wookiee? I'll say it, I don't care. This kid's growing on me. And he literally, I don't think he was even looking at me in the eye when he said, he's like, yeah, I don't know, be charming. <laughs>
Who is this guy? I want to know more about him. Lando Calrissian. This card player, gambler, scoundrel. You'd like him. Donald Glover actually got to meet Billy D. Williams and get his advice on how he should approach the character. Yeah, he's like, just be charming. That was right. his big advice. And he literally, I don't think he was even looking at me in the eye when he said, he's like, yeah, I don't know, be charming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, he, yeah, I'm overthinking it. I'm saying like, he's probably from a rich family and that he he's, <laughs> wants to escape, like, you know, like, right. he's like, nah, man, I was trying to get girls. Welcome, Leia. All right, all right. Billy D. Williams just oozed charm. And right now in Hollywood, there is no one who could take that on better than Donald Glover. You look phenomenal. Well, I knew I was gonna see you. I love Donald Glover. I think he's great. <laughs> just his spontaneity within the scenes is just, it just like keeps refreshing. It's incredible. Captain Lindo Carrizzi, Han Solo. Looks like you're uh, having a good day. I'm a lucky guy. The two of them, have a kind of complicated friendship. You got a lot of guts coming here after what you pulled. We backstabbed each other later. Yeah. yeah. Not yet. Not yet, though. But everybody knows. Can I ask you a question, Captain Calrissian? Anything, Han? That's Han, but that's OK. We see their history of trust, distrust, that will, of course, lead to events in later movies. What have you done to my ship? Your ship? Hey. Remember, you lost her to me fair and square. Don't trap yourselves in. I'm going to make a jump to light speed. The Millennium Falcon is so iconic because it is hands down one of the most legendary ships in cinematic history. You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Should I have? It's a ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Some of the greatest adventurous scenes throughout Star Wars history have taken place on that ship. Julie, get us out of here! Oh my, I've forgotten how much I hate space travel. The Millennium Falcon has been through a lot. It's almost been shot down. There was no laser blast, I'm near It was almost eaten once. Most of us are used to seeing the Millennium Falcon as this dirty, falling apart ship. What a piece of junk. That happens to barely escape. Uh, by the skin of its teeth. Don't worry, we're all together. We're finally going to get to see it when it's shiny and new and see what just made this the fastest ship in the galaxy. The Millennium Falcon. Every ship isn't for everyone. And of course, there's nothing cooler than watching the Falcon go into hyperspace. This ship is a star itself. It's like a character that people have come to love and want to know all about, and I think you'll be excited to see it front and center in this film. I thought we were in trouble there for a second, but it's fun. We're fine. The way I came to this and I was thrown into it, I had to trust my own instinct and I also trust the screenplay. These movies become very personal to everyone involved, and I certainly felt that. Ron Howard, we've known him since he was six years old, playing Opie Taylor in The Andy Griffith Show. And then in his teenage years, he went on to star on Happy Days. And then on top of that, he transitioned into one of the best directors in Hollywood. Phil Lord and Chris Miller were the original directors on this. They had creative differences with the studio and ultimately it halted production. Lucasfilm turned to someone George Lucas himself already knew well. I immediately heard from George Lucas, who gave me, you know, a nice, nice vote of confidence. The way I came to this and I was thrown into it, I had to trust my own instinct and I also trust the screenplay. These movies become very personal to everyone involved, and I certainly felt that. Ron Howard uh, is a big Star Wars fan. In fact, he and his wife lined up uh, in 1977 to see Star Wars. We stood in line for two hours to see the movie. I was so enthralled, and I think that's the key to these movies, is I was transported. We cheered, we, we cried, all the things you're supposed to do. The best thing about Ron Howard being the director, of course, is that he's a dream to work with. Made us all feel really safe and really listened to. He's just got such wonderful ideas, and he's incredibly collaborative. More than anything, he's just simply a joy. I've known Ron for many years. He's very, very prepared, you know. He has everything storyboarded, knows how he needs this shot, and he has to go 
get this shot, and yet he's also pretty fluid in the sense that he'll change it up if, oh, that blocking's better, so let's do that. He came in, he had a big task, he had a lot to accomplish, and he had to get up to speed quickly, and he just, he did it beautifully. One of the most exciting things about this movie is that the screenwriters are Lawrence Kasdan and his son, Jonathan. Lawrence Kasdan, who had also, of course, written The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and The Force Awakens. One of the things we worked on was the climactic scene of Han being killed by his son. <laughs> I was trying to kill him off back at Empire. Harrison himself thought he should go in Jedi. George didn't want to do it at any of those times. And he may have been right, because it was certainly fun when we, 30 years later, came back. Chewing. we're home. We got to work on the last moments of Han Solo's life, and then say, okay, well, what's the first time we're gonna see him? And that's a fun, dramatic device to be sort of driving you into writing a screenplay. It's finally here, May 25th, can't come soon enough. We're finally gonna get to know everything you've wondered about Han Solo. You in? That's yes. I've got so much respect for Alden and the way he tackled it, and I think audiences are, are, are really gonna be impressed with him. When have I ever steered you wrong? Don't listen to him. So get into your Millennium Falcon. Bring your Wookiee friends and go see Han Solo, A Star Wars Story on a planet near you because it's going to be incredible.